In this session, we're going to model the plants for our bioswale and render the scene in Lumion. So we're going to make something looking like this from our bioswale that we made in Rhino. Lumion, we'll start a new scene. We're going to pick a white scene. Just ground plane and sky. And we're going to use the Lumion Live Sync plugin for Rhino to sync this model with Lumion. We could also export this as a Colada.dae file, but this is by far the easiest, most interactive process. So you'll need to go to Lumion's website and download the Live Sync plugin for Rhino and install it. I'm going to start the Live Sync and go over to Lumion. You'll see my model here. It's going to be beneath the ground plane because I started modeling it at the ground plane in Rhino. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it up. When I have the object here, I click on it, I get a control handle, a gumball. I've selected it, so now in I'm in the import selection here. I'm going to use move up. And then when I click on the gumball, I can translate this up. I'm going to move it above the ground plane. And we can see our scene with the basic materials that we imported. Um, look for, on the Lumion forums, look for uh, hotkeys to start to understand hotkeys for navigation. This uses the sort of navigation system in games, so WASD, W is forward, S is backwards, A is sideways, D is sideways, right mouse button is orbiting, and Q and E are moving up with Q, down with E. These are our basic navigation commands. So start by getting a good view of your scene. The first thing we're going to do is assign materials. So we've got the Rhino materials on here, but we're going to assign some nicer Lumion materials. So I'm going to go, I'm in the um, object placement import tab right now. I'm going to go to the materials tab here. And you can see my objects now are selectable by material. So I'm going to start with my concrete. I'm going to look at outdoor, the outdoor tab at concrete, and I'll look at a few different options here. I'll pick this one, a nice light colored concrete. For the gravel, soil, and go to the second page with the polygon materials. I'm going to pick one of the polygon gravels. For the soil, I'm going to go to Nature, Soil, and I'll pick something fairly sandy. I'll explore a few different materials. Don't want something too colored. That looks okay. And for the water, finally, I'm going to go to the Material Library, Nature, Water, and explore a few different materials. I'll go with a simple white water for this. So we've assigned our basic materials. I might look briefly or a decent metal. I'll look on the outdoor metals. In the later tab, I think there's a rusty polygon metal here. Oops. I'm going to click on my metal 
material here. I'm going to go to outdoor, metal, third tab. I'm going to look at these two metal materials. Let's go with the first one, the rust metal plane. This looks like a fine material setup for my scene. Next, I'll just begin planting. I'm going to hit save changes, the checkbox in the bottom right corner to accept. So next we're going to begin by placing rocks, then we'll place ground cover, then we'll place higher plants and shrubs. I'm going to go to object placement. I'm going to go to nature. So objects, nature, and then place. For place, I have a nature library. And I'm going to start with the rocks tab. I have multiple pages. I'm going to start by placing some stones in the creek. Place a nice large flat stone perhaps right here. I'm not going to worry too much about where these are right now. I'm going to edit them later. I'm going to go ahead and start by placing some. If I want to randomize the shape, I can hold down um, V while I place the model. It means the next one's going to have a different orientation and size. I'm mostly interested in placing rocks around um, the bank of the water here. Now that I've placed a few, I'm going to go to select. I'm going to click on it. I can change the height and embed it more into the ground. I can move it freely and um, change their position. I may then move them down into the ground so they're nicely embedded into the bank. If I don't like some of these stones, I can hit delete and I click on their red um, toggle. And I'm going to add a bit more stone and wood to this scene now. So I'll go to placement. I'm going to place a large stone somewhere over here. So I start to build up a massing of stones on my bank. I'm 
Then I'm going to scale these a bit. So I'll take the scale command. And I'll scale them down. I'll move them down into the earth probably a bit. Then I'm going to use the movement commands, move them, embed them a bit better into the ground, perhaps. I want to build up a nice rocky bank that feels a bit more armored. Lumion snapping onto what it perceives as the ground plane, but it may not be where I want the objects, especially since I have a water surface and uh, quite a bit of slope on my ground. So that's maybe, we're almost, almost good on our rocks. We could spend more time on this, certainly. I'm going to add a bit of woody debris around my stream channel now. So I'm going to go to placement. I'm going to go to wood forest, forest wood. I'm going to pick some plunk wood to drop around my scene. I'll hold V to distribute the size. I don't want to put too many similar things in the same place. Did. I'll delete that. Um, so woody debris can be very helpful for biodiversity. So I advise putting some of this in the scene. Go sparing. a little bit of wood and let's start adding some plants. We can come back and add more elements later if we need. I'm going to start, we can make a grassy ground plane, but I want to see some dirt, so I want to build my own ground plane here. I'm going to navigate and get to a nice view where I can see a lot and I'm going to start placing plants. I go to place, I'm in nature, place, and I'm going to go to grasses, first of all. I'm going to start with some reedy, nice reedy grasses that will look good in my bioswale. I'm going to scale these down so they start to make the sort of massing I want. I can copy this. If I go to move, move free, and if I hold alt, I can move this and make a copy. Hmm. 
might do this a few times to start to make a mask, but then I probably want to scale some of these, get some variation, and perhaps um, scale these a bit for some variation and also rotate them a bit. Now if I copy these, I have a bit more variety to work with. What I want to do is create some clusters, but not, not too many, um, not, not too big artificial masses. I want to try to make this look somewhat wild. Don't put too much of one plant at a time. Let's uh, put some others in for variety. I'll add in this Esparto. I'll hold V to vary the size and rotation. And I'll come back in later and adjust the scale if I think if I think is off. Some of these are getting far too big for my taste. I'm going to scale them. And we can keep on adding our massing. I'll put in some, um, I'll put in a bit more Esparto before I move on. I'm going to select and move some of these existing ones. So move, free move with Alt, hold down to copy. And I'll start building some clusters of these two plants together. Let's add a little more variety to our scene now. Actually, I need a bit more planting over here. Before I move on, I'm going to put a bit more plants over in these corners. On this side of the scene. Oops. I don't want this rock, so I'll delete it. To hold alt and put a few more plants over here. Let's just move this guy. That's getting okay. All right. I'm starting to get some massing. I'm going to add some more plants. Um, I'm going to put in something like this uh, feather grass. Hold V to vary the size. I'll add a bit to these massings. And put some of these closer to the water's edge too. Hold V to start varying the size rotation. We'll build a cluster of these right here. If 
there are commands to place a cluster, but we can click pretty fast holding B and do a good job too. I prefer it this way. Um, a bit more, a bit more control. Let's add something, um, some more grasses, um, some spiny mat rush. a few more of these in this part of the scene. And I'm going to add a bit more feather grass. And now I'm going to add some swamp foxtail, especially close to the edge. I'm holding down V to place it. A little bit of randomization in size and rotation. I'm starting to get a lush planting in places. I can think of these as sort of making uh, drifts of plants. I'm going to put in a few more different species here and try and rich, richen this a little bit. And I might put in some more feather grass over here. Place a Sparto and scale it down. And then I'm going to put a little bit of grass, grasses in here. Try and fill in some of these. I'm starting to get a very lush scene.
You want to put anything too close to the curb in case it crosses it, in case it intersects it, which won't look very good. Make sure you scatter a few other plants around here. I may actually want to put some stones um, here where the drains are, or and leave a little bit of soil to show scour, even though that's not really a positive thing for my design. So I'll place some smaller, smaller stones. Then I'll put a bit more grass around here. I'll put some more grasses to fill this area. scale this way down. And then we put one more small plant in, maybe a little bit of grass right there at the edge. And I'm going to check out the curb cuts on the other side of the scene, and then I'll worry a bit more uh, with the water layer. Maybe I'll put a little bit of grasses. I'm going to place some stones. Mistake. That's probably enough. I don't need to go overboard. I'm going to put a few more grasses in and we'll call it a day. I think that looks fine. Um, Bioswale's starting to look nice. I don't think we have quite enough going on in the water channel itself. I'm going to put some plants starting to get wet, and I'm going to put some more rocks in there too. I'm 
So one issue we have is our water level. So I'm going to start moving these down now. These move up. Make sure these guys are, uh, as best as I can tell, getting getting their feet wet. place too many um, or leaving them above the water level it may, uh, may come back to trouble me later with my rendering Let's add some rocks around these guys. Move, move these to the right height. Let's just delete. And I'll adjust these as well. I'm going to place a few rocks around those and we'll uh, look at making a rendering. Bad. We could keep on um, adding stuff to make the scene look nice. I'm going to add a few more plants right around the weir, actually. So now, once our scene looks good, let's look at rendering this scene. I may want a view that's fairly embedded in the scene. Let's show off my nice lush planting. So let's explore a little bit and find a camera angle you like. So let's go with that. And now we go to the photo command. And we see the scene we set up. We can still navigate and rotate here. Um, we can adjust the focal length um, to make sure we have a horizontal eye level. And we can set up um, effects that will add to our rendering. So we can pick a preset. For example, realistic or daytime would be a good starting point. But let's look at adding 
RFX. I'm going to start by adding field of depth so that we can blur the foreground and the background a bit. So as we increase the amount of field of depth, we see right now the foreground blurring quite a bit. We're going to probably set this to a, close to 100, maybe not 80. And we can adjust whether this is in the foreground or happening in the background. So if we set it all the way to the background and we increase this, we can blur out, make the background start to blur. It also depends on our focal distance. Is our focal distance right up here? Is it in the middle of the scene or is it in the background? So we'll set our focal distance towards the middle. Use this so it's not quite so aggressive. And we'll set our foreground, middle ground to the middle go back. Now we've added effect, we can disable it right here and we can re-enable it to see the difference. So we're just blurring some of the stuff in the foreground and in the background. I'm going to add a, a new effect and go to lighting. We're going to add a bunch of these. We're going to add sun, shadow, global illumination, and volumetric sun. So let's add some shadow. I'm going to turn on soft shadow, find details, and we're going to see that makes a big difference with all these plants. I'm going to go back. I'm going to add, um, could add either sun or volumetric sun. Uh, I sorry, either sun or sun study. If I add a sun, um, I can start changing the height to adjust this. With the sun study, I'd be changing time of day and location. This, this is more about manual control, that's more about setting uh, a time and location. We can adjust the brightness. And I'm going to go back and add another effect. I'm going to add volumetric sunlight. As I adjust the range, it's making the background sort of burnt out. I'm going to reduce this brightness dramatically. I just want a little bit of an effect in the distance. I'm going to add global illumination. Right, let's try a test rendering with this now. Um, to render this, I am going to click here on Render Photo. Uh, first of all, I can store my camera right here. So I can come back to this. If I go to Render Photo, these are additional possible channels. I'll discuss that in a minute. We can set a render size. Hit Render. and save this. Okay. Now we're going to set up one more scene for rendering. I'm going to set it quite low so I can start to see the sky.
say like that. Okay, so we're going to render this scene. Let's uh, adjust our field of depth. Blur the background a little bit more. And make sure I focus nicely. In the check down area. And um, let's render the scene. I'll save a new view and zoom out a tad, maybe. Let's see. I'm going to hit render photo. This time I'm going to save the sky alpha channel so I can easily cut out the sky. I'm going to make this print size and save it as bioswale. We're going to open this now in Photoshop and quickly cut out the sky. I'm going to take Bioswale 3 and the sky channel and open them in Photoshop. So here's the sky alpha channel. I'm going to copy this. Control A, Control C. I'm going to paste it here. Control V. I'm going to right click on my background and make a layer from the background. I'm going to take the magic wand tool with W. I have layer one magic wand. I'll turn off contiguous. I'm going to click on the sky. I should have gotten most of this. I'm going to click on layer one. Hide layer. Hide layer one. Click on layer zero. Delete the sky. And um, I should have a good clean cut. Now I'm going to crop it with C. And there's my final scene.